Welcome to the show. Today we focus on an emerging field in which Middle Eastern women are gaining acclaim. That's the film industry. Top international prizes are going to female filmmakers from the region. Today we speak to just a few. Mania Akbari, recently dubbed the Iron Lady of Iran by the Guardian newspaper. Also, we have Rim Uwartzi, a cinema studies researcher at King's College. Finally, Jenny Montesir, a documentary filmmaker based in Egypt. First, we welcome Mania. Mania, thank you so much for joining us on Her Voice today. Your films have a certain level of rawness that distinguishes them from other films in you know, cinema today. Can you tell me, for instance, in the film From Tehran to London, where did you draw inspiration from? Um, it's not really possible to exactly draw the lines of where these inspirations come from real life, that how they reflect from your thoughts into your work. But uh, what I can say is that for me, it's life itself. After I, I draw these experiences from my own life uh, and I get inspired, they're no longer just personal, for example, they're not just uh, Mania's experiences. They belong to the public and they, they are a greater um, message. What you're really known for is being one of the most fearless filmmakers in Iran. Was it difficult for you to operate as a filmmaker and produce your work? At times, uh, there is a great force inside you to create. It's not limited or stopped by any uh, limitations. For sure, there were great pressures and there, there were fears. And, but at the time, when I was surrounded in, in, in that situation, I think I wasn't uh, aware of how intense it was. Iran has a new president in place who's promising to really free the country of some of the uh, discrimination as well as some of the poverty that people have faced. Do you have faith that that's going to happen? I think in general hope is very important for people of any society and it's positive. I, I think to be able to predict what's the future of a country or society is going to be, I think it's not possible and it's not, it's not right. Because I believe that politics has different science to it and the, the way that they, they play, it's something that we cannot predict. Do you think that there will be less or more opportunities for you to work in your industry with given the new uh, president in place? Will it impact your work at all? For sure, we can uh, be hopeful that they would deliver on those promises, but uh, certainly we cannot guess what it's going to be like. You have won awards all over the world. Why do you think your work resonates with people? I think that films that talk about your inner thoughts and also about the um, human condition in general, it's not limited to a certain geography or location, that a lot of other people also have similar thoughts and emotions, so it can affect people at large or humankind at, at large. Do you think other women are going to be encouraged to get into the industry because of your example? I think that it's important that um, any woman would want to um, reach more awareness um, or spread awareness um, through artistic work. So that gives power. Um, also to other women perhaps uh, that they would they would believe that nothing is impossible after receiving all of these international awards do you see them as a mark of a major accomplishment for you? As an artist or filmmaker, the most reward you gain is from your audience and by the attention you get, you know, by grasping their attention. So that would encourage you and inspire you to, for your future works, to continue working and uh, making and making that connection with the audience. Uh, what's next for you? 
um, I think that when you are in a new environment and that you are experiencing uh, with lots of new ideas and, and forms, that creates the greater um, need or interest to create new work. So at the moment I'm writing a script for my new project. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mania. One to One is available on DVD, one of your latest films that are out, and good luck with all of your endeavors. Welcome back to the show. Now we focus on the evolution of the film industry with Middle Eastern women at the helm. Joining me in the studio is Rim Uwartzi. She's a researcher at King's College in Cinema Studies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rim, we have not only seen women in films, but they are at the helm of internationally renowned films. What does that do for the industry as a whole? In fact, the industry as a whole is moving uh, at, a, at a pace which is really faster than it used to be in the past. This is due to different uh, elements that contribute to that, because women are contributing a large part in the film, in the filmmaking industry, also in the financing, and also in the, they have an impact on the audiences as well. So seeing also women as filmmakers give examples to other women and also to other, not only women, I would say, honestly, it gives also, um, in the society, seeing these women fighting for their films and going for financing gives a whole idea of how the society is changing. But on the other hand, this is the women filmmakers have no difficulty in directing crews. This is what came, comes out. More difficulties in financing and finding the actresses as well who want to play in their roles. There is an example of a filmmaker, Algerian filmmaker, Sofia Jama. She did a short movie about uh, a woman who gets raped and she couldn't find an Algerian actress to act in her film because acting was as if the event happened to her. So as a woman film director, she couldn't get a, another woman to play. So the role of women is changing, of course, but the whole uh, way of playing also has to be changing as well, yes. So when these women enter into these prominent festivals and really shine a light on their contributions to the film industry, does that in any way advance the cause of uh, equality amongst women back home in their Middle Eastern countries? Uh, this is an ambiguous question because <laughs> these women have success in foreign festivals and who are the audiences? They are not the people who watch their films back home. So this is really controversial because there is a question are these women getting awards because their position as women representing another country and uh, we don't see them much outside. So, oh, there is the women rights issue. Let's see it and represent it and give it awards. This is like the question that's coming through. Why are not they awarded in their home country? This is the difficulty because the, um, the situation is that they, they are praised in the newspapers, but their films are not distributed at all. Mm or hardly, or if they are distributed, it's in the uh, foreign institute, cult cultural institute. So they're not distributed on the mainstream. It's really rare. And once they've been recognized, then they can come back. But this is, anyway, at least it has a positive aspect. It gives them visibility. It gives them a voice. It gives them also that they are present. They're making changes. And at least there are women present there. And also it gives them maybe the ability to make other films as well, which is really great for them as well, yes. You know, one must not assume that there's necessarily a, a uniform woman's voice in the region. But when you do have major events, such as the Arab Spring, and you have filmmakers reflecting on it, perhaps from a woman's perspective, how does that in any way add to the discussion that's being uh, created around these events? Of course, the point of view is doubled. For, is from the artistic point of view of a woman, and it's from the woman. What is she filming? How is she filming these events? How is she living these events and impacting her in her own society, in her own also intimacy? And this is really reflected. For example, there is a documentarist, um, a Tunisian, Nadia Alfani. She's filmed when she was in Tunisia before and after the uh, the Arab Spring, and she really was 
into her skin filming this and then she was attacked by Islamists because of her film and she gave another opinion, she gave another point of view. So of course she gave voice to other women that were not seen before and she filmed, it's, it's her subjective, of course voice and this is what we need, we need that all voices are raised and also we need not only women, men, other men giving their voice. So this is, I think this is a really good point that this um, Arab Spring allowed women and also the media, uh, the easiness of the media allowed women to go and advance and their rights and claim for their own person, yes, and their artistic voice as well. So this okay. doesn't okay. need to be dissociated from women. A woman is also an artist, she's also making the film. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. I'm joined over Skype by Jenny Montesir. She is a documentary filmmaker in Egypt. Jenny, welcome. In studio, we have Rim Uortzer, a cinema studies researcher at King's College. I'm going to turn it to Jenny right now, who, of course, is in a very volatile region of the world. Jenny, tell me, how have you been able to produce your work in a country like Egypt right now? Well, um Basically, by just doing it, um, I've been here for about two and a half years. I started filming directly after the 18-day revolution in January 2011. And, um, yeah, it's, a, it's not an easy place to film. I think it wasn't an easy place to film even prior to the revolution. But um, I came and I wanted to uh, film a long-form documentary. I started following one woman and her family's experience from... Uh, directly after the revolution until the end of last year. Uh, and in the meantime, I've produced several short documentaries, uh, mainly focused on human rights uh, related to, to women's rights, uh, mainly. Um, and I guess in the past uh, couple months, it's even become more difficult uh, to film here. But uh, there, are, there are a lot of people that came after the revolution, and uh, several films have already been produced in this time period. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess filming in this region is, is just a question of, um, you know, being smart when you're going out and filming and considering the challenges that everyone faces when doing so. But, uh, then just taking that step forward and, and because it's documentary, of course, deciding on, uh, what, what aspect of what's happening here that you, you would like to cover. So speaking of, you know, focusing your work, you have discussed women's rights for several years in your work. Tell me, why is that an issue that resonates so deeply with you? Well, it was directly related to this family that I mentioned and the woman, uh, her story of how the revolution affected her and what happened to her in the years that followed and the changes that she wanted to make in her life and the challenges that she was facing to overcome um, some of the issues. And I just decided that uh, if I really wanted to understand what she was going through, I couldn't just um, take my knowledge of what I know about women's rights in my own country, what women's rights in Egypt, and, and you know, I, I wanted to really explore these issues. And so uh, I actually made these short documentaries based on things that she was facing in her own life. Um, so whether it's uh, domestic violence or... Uh, what, what was sort of happening with the women's rights movement because we had after the revolution, we had so many women who said, okay, this is our chance. And of course, there were many people working on these issues beforehand, but someone like uh, this woman in my film, she hadn't considered before that she could actually stand up for her rights. Okay. Um, and so, okay. Okay. Now, uh, you know, we heard about her experiences, a uh, woman in front of the lens, but you, as a woman behind the lens, can you tell me about what sort of issues you face in terms of ensuring your safety as uh, throughout the filming process? Right. I mean, there's definitely precautions that you can take, and it was from everything even before um, when deciding what kind of equipment I would have with me, how much would I be carrying what would I wear on a day I was going out shooting, depending where I was going? Would I bring people with me? Would I go by myself? Um, and as I said, it's not a, a country that's very friendly to cameras at all. And, and this has become uh, definitely much worse, especially now it's much worse. Um, but uh, yeah, I would always take into consideration these factors. And that said, I mean, I was out filming in Tahrir Square. I was out filming at demonstrations and 
you know, maybe something minor would happen, but I really didn't have some of the problems that other journalists or filmmakers had. But then, for example, I decided, okay, I need to go out and film a marketplace in a neighborhood. And on this day, somebody tried to grab the camera from my hands and, and said, who are you? What are you doing? I, I think we should make a citizen arrest of you. So it's like you, you can't even know in the end what could be the situation that could put you in danger. Um, so in the end, it's also... You know, you, you can take every precaution, but you, you actually don't know when a situation like that might happen. Now, uh, moving beyond your kind of immediate experiences, can you tell me how the film industry has evolved in Egypt since you've been there? Has it grown at all? Well, I, I think definitely, especially after uh, the 18 days, you had really sort of a, a, a strong growth in arts movements in general. I mean, people wanted to... Uh, to do something art with any kind of arts and includes film. Um, unfortunately, by now, a lot of these initiatives haven't survived either because of lack of funding or because it was run on the initiative or passion of, of people that, you know, life goes on and they couldn't uh, carry on with it. But I think what you've seen a lot more of now is um, people who are interested in the idea of citizen journalism or, you know, picking up the camera themselves and saying, hey, I have a story that I want to tell and we have uh, so much mis misinformation in the media and we have so many points of view that get lost. So I've seen a real um, growth and explosion in people, you know, wanting to to learn more about filmmaking. Um, and I've given a presentation before at an initiative where people came together and said they wanted to be a citizen journalist out covering what was going on. So I was sort of, you know, giving them some tips on uh, how to create a story, how to, you know, capture the images that they needed to put something like this together. Do you think that creating this community organically, you know, bringing them all together and, and teaching them in a classroom in this way is going to put pressure on any government, the interim government, the successive governments to follow? Uh, is that going to change kind of Egypt as we know it today? Well, of course, I mean, this is the power of film is that it's the potential to show stories that you might not know of things that are happening. Um, and there's definitely, there's a collective that's been going on now for two and a half years that specifically focused on going out to places where demonstrations or, you know, when things are happening and shooting their own footage and getting it out on the internet. And, and I think for at least 2011, it was like the highest viewed YouTube channel in Egypt because these are the stories that, that, that aren't shown in the mainstream media. And as far as the effect this can have, I mean, now these days you have journalists and uh, filmmakers who are detained. Um, we had uh, several who were killed in the last month. Uh, and uh, this shows the power of what they're doing. I mean, they're a threat. It's a threat to show what's actually happening here. So, um, so you can see that this is very. This is seen as very powerful by by the state. Okay, interesting. Now I'm going to move the conversation up to Rim. Uh, tell me what you think. What role should governments play in terms of encouraging the development of the film industry? Um, governments can play an important role in any ways to encourage to to make people aware of uh, the the power of filmmaking we know that filmmaking is really about building uh, an imaginary for the people and also nations because filmmaking is also building the nationhood and reuniting people but the thing is government can play also a dangerous role in censorship in uh, pro prohibiting uh, cinemas from showing films from uh, um, putting pressures on film directors on not funding so the government really has a role to play, first of all, give freedom to people. Give freedom, give them that art is not something the government should uh, censor or should uh, keep control over it. And this is the, really the hard question because if you want that filmmaking uh, reflects the government's ideas, then you're getting to no, no place, nowhere. And then you're not helping them. And then there's also the question of uh, the 
taboo subject that you don't cross, that the government ha doesn't help you with that, such as sexuality, religion, political issues. If the government doesn't help in freeing all these subjects, how can filmmaking go further? And also, there are many points as well. <laughs> there are also, uh, how do we call it, material. Mm -hmm. How do you sustain the film industry if you don't have produ productions, uh, cinemas where people can go, if the television is not sustaining these films? So yeah, the role of the government, I would say, is really important, but should also allow a lot of freedom to the filmmakers. Yeah, it should allow that. Thank you. Jenny, now to you. Um, you know, you hear everyone, I think, would agree that to have any sort of a flourishing democracy, you need a free press. Do you think for a stable government in a country like Egypt, do you also need to have a film industry that's able to flourish? Um, of course, but uh, I can't tell you from now what's going to happen next. I mean, right now, Especially what happened in the past month, there's there's a lot of uh, propaganda on TV, and uh, you have uh, also an accusation that the Western media is getting everything wrong. So I I'm not really sure where the film industry stands in all of this, but all I know is that on the streets, I worry every time I go out now and take my camera, and and the moment I pull it out of my bag, I'm taking a big risk. So. Um, I mean, this is documentary as compared to, to people working on narrative, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, really, I, it's another part of we don't know what's going to happen next. Um, okay. okay, well, thank you so much, Jenny, for joining us. Stay safe on the streets of Egypt. In the studio, Rim, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you to all of my guests for being on today's show. We'd like to hear what you thought of it or any future story ideas you might have. Contact us at levant.tv. You can also visit us on Twitter at HerVoiceLTV. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.